Hey everyone, it's Thursday, time for more chocolate. Um, today I'm going to talk about this one, MIA chocolate out of Madagascar. So MIA stands for Made in Africa and it was founded in 2017 by Brett Beach and his wife Sarah Lescravet, I hope I said that right, Beach. Um, it focuses on ethical production of finished products in Africa. So they're bean to bar makers who produce ethical chocolate. All of their all of their cacao is sourced from Madagascar and the bars are made in the capital of, <laughs> of Madagascar. And here I go, I'm gonna try and say it. Antananarivo. I hope I said that right too. <laughs> okay, so they were actually just recently listed as one of the top three confectionery companies ethically by an organization in the UK called the Ethical Consumer Organization. So let me tell you a little bit about Brett and a little bit about his wife Sarah and how they started the company together. So Brett was born in the UK but when he was little he moved to the US with his mom and he actually has a BA in Humanities from Loyola Marymount University. He studied abroad in Mexico. He visited Europe and moved to Spain and eventually he ended up in the Peace Corps, which is a volunteer organization. Um, it, um, he, and he was assigned to go to Madagascar to teach English. And he went not knowing um, the Malagasy language uh, not knowing anything about the culture, he went to Madagascar and taught English for two years, which is amazing. Um, after that, he stayed in Madagascar for a little while and he worked on other development projects. Um, one involved vanilla, Madagascar vanilla. One was a seaweed development project off the coast of Madagascar. He worked for USAID, um, worked for the US Embassy, so lots of experience developing um, finished products and products for export in Madagascar. So by then, it's needless to say that he was familiar with the Madagascar culture. Um, in 2006, he came back to the United States and he was one of the co-founders of Madagascar, um, or what's now called Beyond Good Chocolate. He was there for 10 years. So let's then talk about his wife. So uh, Brett was there until 2016. 2017 is when MIA Chocolate was founded. So Sarah was born in Belgium and she speaks four languages. I'm always so impressed with people who speak more than one language. I can barely speak English. <laughs> uh, so she speaks Dutch, English, French, and German. She has a bachelor's in marketing and communications. And after university, she led tours in Egypt and Cyprus. She traveled to the U.S. after that and worked for a Belgian beer company um, between New York City and San Francisco until 2011. And then she worked for um, Madagascar Chocolate in their office as an office manager, booking travel and things like that. Um, so that's how, probably how I'm guessing they met. Um, she also has an interesting Instagram page if you want to look it up. It's called Edible Food Art for Kids. And she does these, I don't even know how to describe it, kind of like plated food sculptures that are like Disney characters and Pixar characters and turtles and just fun things. So um, that's Brett and Sarah. So they started this in 2017 and their, one of their major goals was Trade Arrayed. And in order to do that, in order to bring the value back from just shipping off commodity cacao, you have to make the finished product in country. So they started by making the finished product, making the chocolate instead of just growing the cacao and exporting the chocolate instead of the beans. And by doing that, you bring um, four to five times more of the value into the local revenue of Madagascar. And they also um, strive to use 
um, local supply partners for all of their ingredients that go into the bar and the packaging and all of that. So they have about 13 local supply partners. They do pay uh, 30%, I think, I think it's 30% more than fair trade, but they are not technically fair trade certified, I don't believe, just checking the package. Um, they regularly audit their supply chain. They work with an uh, Irish NGO called Pr uh, Proud, Proud Made in Africa. I think that's what, it's PMIA. <laughs> but um, they measure the social impact of their company on the local supply chains and how they're um, either adding or taking away value from um, local uh, Malagasy people. Um, so they get their cocoa from, they have, um, buy it from independent farmers in, um, Northwest Valley of Madagascar, um, famous growing area for Madagascar. And they kind of have a unofficial motto of amazing flavors that do good. So the amazing flavor comes from the Madagascar cacao, which has I don't know if it was first, but it had to be close to the first, if not first, was the first cacao to um, get the fine flavor designation from the ICCO, the International Co uh, Cocoa Organization. They work with independent farmers, so they have good partners. And they have, he's bringing 10 years of experience in the industry, which is really valuable because a lot of craft makers, when they get into this, they have no clue what they're doing and they're learning along the way. So he's already coming with a lot of experience in making the chocolate and marketing the chocolate, all of the things that go along with having a craft chocolate bar. How they do good is they are using local supply chain, they're using local ingredients, they are ethically sourcing their ingredients, and they are giving back to the community. I'll talk a little bit about that after we try the chocolate. So the one I'm going to try today is this one, it has a local ingredient. The baobab is a tree that grows in Madagascar. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about that tree and a little bit more about the packaging and the chocolate. So let's flip the camera around and we'll do that. Okay, so I have two bars from MIA Chocolate right now. I have the cranberry and hazelnut bar, which I'm not going to open today. The one I'm going to open today is this one, the baobab and salted nibs. So let's talk about, let's talk about Madagascar. Madagascar is the fourth largest island in the world. And it's been an isolated island for a really long, for quite a, quite a while, geologically speaking. And because of that, a lot of the flora and fauna have evolved in, they've evolved in isolation, which means that 80% of their flora and fauna is endemic, which means it only found on the island. So you know this, you can think of animals like ring-tailed lemurs, chameleons, or only native to the island. You can obviously find those things other places now. <laughs> chameleons are all over the place in Hawaii from people setting them free and one of the endemic species is the baobab so the baobab maybe I'll throw a picture in of it because you know what it is it's it's sometimes called the upside down tree um, it's there's a few species of baobab some of the more common ones is Adansonia digitata um, it was actually the nomenclature comes it's named after a french naturalist the one that you'll see in pictures is the giant baobab adansonia grandi grandi dieri <laughs> make sure i say that right so they're really cool trees they're really cool looking trees they have these really fat trunks that store water they um get, they're really old trees the oldest one i think was carbon dated to over 2400 years old they're regularly over a thousand years old. Um, actually, interesting, they're in the same family as cacao. So Theobroma cacao and baobab are both in the Malvaceae family. Um, what else can I tell you about this? Oh, it's, the baobab has 
an interesting reproductive cycle. So the flowers literally open and close in one night, um, open and die in one night, actually. So difficult for them to reproduce. The fruit looks kind of like a Theobroma grandiflorum, if you've ever seen that one. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? So we talked a little bit about Madagascar. This bar is gonna be a 65% single origin, Madagascar cacao. Food with thought, dark chocolate, it is vegan. And this here, I don't know if you can see that very well. That to me looks like an Adinkra symbol, which I thought were um, Ghanaian in nature, West Africa. But that's what, it sure looks like that to me. So I don't know how well the camera is picking that up, but it looks like um, Sankofa, which is like a kind of a duck bird looking backwards. So it means to go back and get or to return. So I think they're probably um, talking about returning value and revenue to the people of Africa. Let's take a look at the back here. Okay, single origin. Mm -mm -mm. Ingredients, cocoa mass, cane sugar, cocoa butter, cacao nibs, Baobab powder, sunflower lecithin, sea salt. All right, sounds good to me. Let's look at the things down here. We have no soy, vegan and proudly made in Africa. Okay, let's open it up, take a look at what it looks like. Yeah, Madagascar is, and I think I said it, but you don't, someone from Madagascar is not called a Madagascarian. <laughs> they are said to be Malagasy. So that's how you describe someone who comes from Madagascar. All right, that's a nice looking bar. It does, it's a lighter, it's not a super dark bar. It's a little bit lighter in color. Oh, how interesting. <laughs> I like it. So the bar isn't divided into sections, but they've put the, the nibs on the back so that you, with almost every piece, you'll get some of the nibs. That's a, it's a fun and interesting way to divide up the inclusions. How unique. All right. So I'm going to break off one of these triangles here. Ooh, that's a good snap. Let's see if I can get that near the microphone. That's a nice snap. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rub my thumb against this to warm up the cocoa butter because it melts near human body temperature and smell to get some aromas and then I'll taste and we'll come back and talk about it. Okay, so when I smell this, I get a smell that I'm not sure about. So I've never had baobab powder on its own, so I don't know how it tastes separately. I read that it, how it tastes, and there's a little bit, when I smell this, I definitely get chocolate, and I get kind of a, I don't know, like a musty kind of flower scent, like flour as in the stuff that you bake with and I can smell a really nice chocolate smell. When I taste it, I get what I expect out of a Madagascar cacao. I get nice cocoa notes, I get citrus, and I think I get a double punch of citrus coming from the uh, baobab. From what I read, the citrus, um, baobab has kind of a citrus taste to it, so I think I'm getting a double punch of that because the citrus is really quite strong. And the, the red fruit notes that you normally expect in Madagascar cacao are muted a little bit. The salt is nice with it. The salt and the citrus are nice together. The nibs are nice. Um, it's in general a good bar. I like it. Yeah. I'm just taking another bite. It's a nice bar. It's worth trying for sure. Um, such an interesting and unique inclusion that they have in there. I'd be interested to try this one to see if the 
chocolate is as citrusy as this one is or if it's the baobab yeah and you get the the citrus is just really strong and it stays in your mouth at the back of your throat it's interesting hmm, that might be a fun one to use in tastings okay let's flip the camera around and i will tell you a little bit about the um, projects that they have going on in madagascar Okay, so I wanted to tell you a little bit about the projects that MIA has initiated and participates in. So um, there's three that I know of. They have their One for Change program, which 1% of their sales goes to support. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot, but Madagascar is a, has a lot of poverty. 80% um, of the people are subsistence farmers. Over 50% of the people live in extreme poverty. In the rural areas, it's, it's really bad. Over 80% um, have food insecurity. A lot of us in North America and probably Western Europe have never really experienced food insecurity. Uh, you may have gotten a glimpse of it this year when you went to the grocery store, I mean last year, in 2020 when you went to the grocery store and what you wanted wasn't available, but still, it's not, it really wasn't the same. So there's 1% goes a long way. Um, their 1%, the One for Change program supports uh, school meals, adult literacy, and I believe they're developing a separate adult literacy program for 2022 goes for famine relief, um, scholarships, just to help out, to change, to make a difference. Um, the second thing that I know that they do is they have a girls education fund. Uh, in impoverished nations, usually the male children in the family are the ones whose education is prioritized. Uh, so they have a girls education fund. And what that is, it's a monthly scholarship for the girls until their education career. So it's not just one year or a couple of months. It's sponsoring for the rest of their education. And it's not that much. It's like 20 to 40 pounds a month, British pounds. So that covers the girls' school fees, that covers health care, that covers lunch for them. And there's lots of studies that show when girls are educated, they lift whole families up. Uh, the last one that I know about is they have an MIA green reforestation project in with, with they are partnered with a UK charity whose name escapes me right now. Um, so that one is a tree planting reforestation uh, project where they plant indigenous trees, they support tree nurseries, they support um, reforesting lemur ha habitats and by doing so they also offset uh, their carbon dioxide. So that's MIA chocolate, made in Africa chocolate. Um, it's not so easy to get in the United States just yet. It's getting to be a little bit more available, but this is something fun to try with the Baobab, a different inclusion for you to try on your craft chocolate journey. So I hope you get to try it. And if you do, or if you have some interesting fact about Madagascar to tell me, make sure to leave it below in the comments and like this video and subscribe. And we'll see you next week. Thanks.